stop on the way to the anniversary show here in Lima. It is Fade to Black. Michael McCormick and Coach Steve. And Steve, we have a massive show and then two months off so we know that tonight really has to be special and knock it out of the park. It has to be, it has to be important for everyone tonight. We have a lot of uh, a lot of things we saw last month that set up for a lot of stuff for tonight which eventually should set up for the anniversary show. And I'm excited. This card is stacked tonight and as you can see we're about to Things off right now. I think anytime they can our opening match, match here on Fade to night. Black is a six man tag team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Rossford, Ohio, the Terminator, Sam Deal. Talk about a guy who made a game for himself here at war. He his partner. Every week that guy. Every month, sorry. Here's the glasses. And lately those glasses have been helping him protect how hot he is eating all those dubs. Did he bring out his own personal Terminator guys? I'm pretty sure those are his tag team partners, but... Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I think it's called Pay and Do. Oh, I got you. A little bit from column A, a little bit from column B. This is, uh... Here's another jump right into the deep end. These boys are something else. They are from a university right down the road. You know the one. Prince oh, yeah, Oakley. guy in the match. Yeah, how can you trust Sam though, you know? I mean, these two young kids, just probably excited to be in there with Sam. Can they really trust Sam? Let's be honest. I think you can because Sam cares about winning above all. But Sam cares about Sam. Let's just, let's just get that straight, right? This is true, but <laughs> with less money from the pay window, less money to fix up the time. The perm is a perm. It, it's top priority. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been near the place that he gets his perms done in Rossford, Ohio, but they, they ain't doing it for cheap. I, I try to stay away from that. I think it's a little too greasy for me. The big, beefy, strong boy, Sam Beal. I saw him recently. Three different guys hit a Samoan drop on them. He's put together, and it's what he's learned in the last couple of years. I mean, we talk about seeing him on TV and TNA and what he's done going out on the road. He's going to try to impart that wisdom apparently with, as you said, his, his concierges and alienated youth, but don't take Alpha Sigma Sigma lightly. Uh, Alpha Sig, those boys are well-traveled. Even though they're young, they're still slightly new. They're seasoned. They've been up and down the road. They know what they got to do. And this should be a very impressive showing for both teams. Also, the stash game is on point. Brent Oakley, that bad boy has, I hope he has it insured. That's the mustache against the hair. Ah, uh, you know, the perm, I think it's longer, it's greasier. It might be a little bit better. You know, Sam Beal talked to him recently and he said his 
one of his top two all-time wrestlers just happens to be a guy who trained him, taught him some things, and to teach him how to advance every opportunity just like that in Trey Miguel. This man, he's got more dance moves than he does anything. Oh! And the youth, again, experience potentially making a mistake. Sam caught up in the wrong corner, and he's going to pay. Tagging in the pledge. Comes at. Oh! Yeah! Baseball side. Oh! The baseball side power bomb. I mean, that, that might be enough. Just enough of a pledge. I said this. You guys had this last month. It's a workhorse. You get a guy in there. To, yeah, he's youthful. I mean, he's kind of going through, but already showing a drop toll of what he knows. Well, you know, he's not fair. He's not far off the bullet game himself. Also working on a pretty fantastic ball. A good deep arm dragon. You know, again, Sam Beal kind of in the corner trying to work with the younger set here. Taking off some guys that I don't think they care. They're ready to fight. Oh, out the shade. They come to fight every single time you see them. And then, you know, this is a tough team. You got a very hungry, alienated youth. You got Sam Beal, which we know what he's capable of. Out the sink, like I said, they got a full plate tonight as alienate youth takes off running. Every once in a while, you just need a hug. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what the effectiveness is of hugs and matches, but I think we're going to find out. Is it's a beautiful combination. Yeah, right into the cover. Casey, right now, just absolutely <laughs> right in the groove. And a smart tag team wrestler, Trio's wrestling in this case, of instead of normally, maybe I would say having two guys in that corner with all three continuing to work like they've been doing it for years. Oh, they, these guys, like I said, they're up and down the road, they're seasoned together. They know exactly what they're doing. Meanwhile, I mean, Sam Beal beat Google Thrill in that three way, and again, I. You need I a guess, hug. Lynch was not all that thrilled about it, and he got caught. Right into a drop kick. Oh! Lynch didn't, didn't see the tag. He probably got some perm juice in his eye. Absolutely didn't see the tag. Didn't uh, know Bill was uh, the legal man there. I think that might be the worst hazing that's happened to Pledge so far. Wasn't even from his own guys. What's Beal thinking here? A wheelbarrow and well, Sam. no one's enough. To try two. It's a beautiful. Sam out here using it, and another human as, as <laughs> weapons, I would say. <laughs> and it kind of goes back to what you said in the opening about Sam Beal. He as. He doesn't care about the health of alienated youth. He just wants to win. Yeah, and Sam's about Sam. You know, this game, you know, this game right here, it's an individual's game sometime, and Sam's on top of that. So I, I love this Alpha Sigma team. You talked about them being up and down the roads. I mean, these are guys who, last weekend they were in Philadelphia with CZW. Yeah. That's not an easy promotion to get into. And before that, they took on Alex Colon and Ricky Shane Page. So they're pretty much ready for anything here in this match. Yeah, they, like I said, these guys have seen a lot in a very short time. So, I don't know if they've ever seen anything quite as much as the Permanator. Oh no, Neil, that knee, pretty much a kneecap to the face. Neil, he doesn't like anybody. And he's, oh! Thought he was going senton, but he hit kind of an elbow to the middle of the back. One, two, and just not enough. But in an unorthodox move, you don't see a lot. No. Step off the guy and then hit him with your elbow. Like I said, Sam Bill, he's got more moves. He's, <laughs> he's a little bit slicker in that perm grease that's dripping down his back. Beal says he beat Will the Thrill Brian Huff, though, last month all by himself. Not really counting about Jake Ely and kind of what happened between Jake and Will and Jimmy Shane and all of that, but still an impressive win and an impressive drop right on his head. Here we go. Casey 
Casey coming back in. Great opening as well. That's when you know the first one hit you hard enough that you're so discombobulated to get up and do it again. Hello. Uh -oh. 3D. That's, that's got to be it. One, two, and Veal saves the match. Veal. Veal single-handedly taking on Al Pacig. He no. doesn't see Pledge up top. Oh, an elbow. Normally, I kind of think maybe it's a cross-body coming. Veal tried to uh, set himself for it. He's in a world of hurt. Oh. Shotgun drop kick and a front flash. That's got to be it. Yeah, That's it. One, two, go. Oh. Broke up by alienated youth. They are trying to help replant the tree of knowledge that is Sam Beal. Oh, we got a breakdown. Fisticuffs on a Saturday Night Live. Yeah, here we go. There is a lot going on. And oh. this is just the start of Fade to Black. And this is just our opening match. Uh-oh. Oh. Someone better call the Allen County Airport. To take flight. Pledge. Oh my goodness. Like a long dart from his own teammates. They're just doing whatever you have to do to win. Yes, sir. I guess that's a part of the initiation. They just <laughs> send you airborne. Can you imagine that being drawn up. See what's going to happen is we're just going to throw you out there. One, two, and. Oh! Out of the. I don't want to say miscommunication, but everybody's down now. Kind of used Pledge there to break up that count in a kind of a unique way there. And they roll up the inside leg hook. One, two. Alien you. Oh! Had that debut against Darren Williams and Matt Taylor. That one probably still hurts. Trying to give out some pain of their own. That was a clean super kick. Big punch bottom! As God is now witness, he's broken in half. Oh! Punch with that stare down of the springboard into the cutter! Into the cutter! Here comes Casey Jacobs. Oh, big bloody European! Northern Lights! And a beautiful Northern Lights with Beal. Right there, you get kicked in the stomach. Beal now with a massive oh, power bomb of his own. One, two, and again. Oh, Brandon. Kicked Beal so hard he pulled his hamstring. Beal now. Spike! There he goes. Uh oh. So Beal's got no help right now. Just two guys in the ring. Everybody else sort of screwed around ringside. We've seen this before. Oh, oh, no. oh. What the hell? Beal, that looking. Oh, no. Hit him with a perm roller, and that's usually it. Two, One, two, three, three. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of this match. Riley Reinhardt, Martian Webb, Alienated Youth, and the Terminator, Those young Sam are on your Beal. 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 Very good, two little charge kick. I need a credit card that's got no limit and a big black chair with a bedroom in it. Go enjoy. Sam Beal, alienated youth. Whoever the hell blinded you, damn goons. I'm sick of getting cheated here at war. Am I looking in the right spot? I'm, I can't even tell who I'm looking right now. But just know this, whoever I'm looking at, Sam, I'm sick of this. Get cheated left and right. Ever since we came here, we've been cheated in and out tag matches. I'm done. Eventually, Alpha Singh is going to win 
Damn it, whoever I'm looking, over here, I don't care. Thank you, Pledge. Look what you did to my boy, busted lip. A busted lip? And you cheated to get the win? I'm sick and tired, and I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Alpha Sigma Sigma will get a W. We will taste a W here at War Wrestling. Not whatever lunacy it is that these two have planned. We have not yet seen exactly what the plan of Jimmy Shane and Shauna Reed is. But we kind of got an idea. You all shut up. so loud in here with these boos that she's 20 feet away from me with a microphone and I can't hear a word she's saying. Now these idiots here in Lima need to shut up so we know exactly what they're trying to say. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Once again, nobody stepped up to work me. I had surgery two weeks ago and I'm still here to fight. Well, Shauna Reed beat Hardcore Heather Owens for that time. I thought you guys paid to see me. And then there's That's whatever right. that. You always do what I say. Shut up. Whatever the hell is going on with Jimmy Shane? Anyway, since War couldn't find me an opponent again, Obviously, Jimmy I Shane scoured the world while I was under, healing from that spell that Shauna possesses, and we don't know about. And I. apparently really happy to be here. So we'll get flew all the way in from Mexico, and you're, and you're gonna sit here and talk about her like you're just stunned to see her? We'll get lost some respect. Championship match underway. And wait a second. What the hell? Are you Obviously. serious right now? Obviously. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner. And what? still, or wrestling oh, women's champion, Shauna Reed! Are you kidding me? This is the kind of champion we're supposed to be proud of. Did you see that? It was a vicious opening right hand. And uh, as tends to do when you buy from other countries, we got a two for one deal. And we found me an opponent from Mexico, too. Oh, this should go well. Yeah, I gave you the information, right? Announce, announce him, announce him. Ladies and gentlemen, 
from Tijuana, Mexico, Lil Parka. I think Lil Parka does not have any chairs. He might come out with like a mini stool. Hopefully this is better than the last. Oh, he does have a chair. I, I guess I was wrong. Uh, Chairman here, my friend. Seems happy to be here. We flew all the way from Mexico. I'd be happy to be here too. Welcome, amigo. Here, yeah, bye bye. Bienvenido. I mean, Sean Reeves definitely got to get out of the ring so we can get this five star underway here. Maybe she's trying to hypnotize Joe too. Well, I mean, she might be careful of that glare on Joe's head might hypnotize her. Oh, come on. That's not. That nonsense didn't work in the 90s. It's not going to work again. Oh, he's going to try ghost fingers. Oh, man. Little Parker is just a brick house. That's, uh, this plan doesn't seem to be going how Jimmy would like. Try to get their fingers dirty. Well, they're the power couple around here. They're gonna have to they'll pay someone to do their dirty bidding. Well, with a reverse winning, we'll call it a fast press. Just beating the daylights out of the Thunderbird, and Jimmy and Shauna aren't even paying attention anymore. Oh, of course not. They're too busy worrying about oh, telling these Lama fans how smelly they are. Beautiful set of kicks by Will, and again, now he's distracted. Will sleep blade. Normally it. I think Sean Reed just realized that uh, their boy Jake ain't on. Jake, shotgun drop kick into the corner. I'm not even sure he knows where Dream Street's at at this point. No, nope, he's on about every street swerving and driving. He's swerving, bobbing, and weaving. It's not working. But again, Will trying to get the people behind him, trying to feed off of it. He's got to quit worrying about Jimmy and Shona. Yeah, if he blinks and takes his eye off of Jake Ely, it could be over in a heartbeat. Now a little Jimmy Shane for you. Jimmy's not a fan. Will back in charge of this match, and Shona giving Jake Ely or Carmen the business. <laughs> Looking like Carmen San Diego. One, two, and three. Oh, here we go. And of course, you can only insult Jimmy Shane one too many times. He hits, he hits Jimmy's elbow. And then we 
hands with Jimmy Spear. In a way, he should be flattered. Jimmy, Jimmy is definitely not flattered about any of this, let me tell you. The former World Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Multiple times Tag Team Champions. And Jimmy eats the turnbuckle. Well now, uh, got oh. away with some help by his friends. Almost got that Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match, Will the Thrill! So Will, who wasn't involved in the match at any point, now gets to go pick up an extra paycheck. And that's not extra insult to those three jabronis, I don't know what it is. Here from Will, and I'm pretty sure what he's got to say they don't want to hear. Tough talk, huh, Jimmy? All talk. Look at all three of you. I mean, really. Look at you. <laughs> you traded on all these people. You traded on me. For that? Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? That's right. Why don't me and you settle this at War 21 on June 1st in a Lima City street fight? I'd pay to see it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I have an announcement to make, too. Wait a minute. As War Wrestling Senior Official, I have something to say. Shauna Reed, you may be the worst War Women's Champion of all time. You have never defended your title. You duck every opponent you have. You cheat to win every match. So at the War Anniversary Show, you will defend that War Wrestling Women's title against Paloma Star. Yeah. We'll see you in June. You talk about massive returns. If you're not here June 1st and you miss that match, you're probably not a fan of wrestling. Paloma Star hasn't been seen at war since last year's anniversary show. Remember hey, I'm right here, bro. Title shot against Shauna Reed, who is not happy about this. Oh. Where are you going? But well, let's talk about this Lima street fight. I don't know if Will knows what he's got himself into. Lima street fight? That's what you want, Will? be like these scumbags who try to put their hands on Sean out there. I get it. You do my moves, you hit the spear, you do the shameless shabs. You think you're, you think you're better than me. You're not better than me. I made Will the Thrill and I'll break Will the Thrill. Just like Shauna is gonna break Paloma Star. I'm sorry, I just, I just hit a moment. I just hit a moment. Did you, did you hear what that senior referee said? She said, I am the worst woman's champion. Well, wrestling has ever had. Are you kidding me? I am the best women's champion war wrestling has ever had. You like to say that I don't defend it. I defend it weekly. I am undefeated. That is not my fault. That is up to you. And come Paloma Star, War Hall of Fame, I'm still going to be women's champion. for one fall. Introducing first from Powell, Ohio, the professional Brandon Fields. You ever been to Powell, Ohio? Never been, but I've been here enough to know that when Brandon Fields walks through that curtain, this man means serious business. I assume he grew up fighting because there's not a lot else to do there. Not a big town, but a professional came out of it, and he's always angry. I don't know what made him happy. Listen, he doesn't like the antics. He doesn't like all the flash and the pants. The man comes here to do one job and one job only, and that's wrestle and leave. That's all he's. That's what he's about. I'm not real sure he's gonna like his opponent tonight because he's not real big on chicanery. It is going to be. And even the man walks with a purpose. Look at him. I would even say his walk is even violent. He's a professional fighter. 
And tonight, and his opponent from San Jose, California, the Mad Cow. He's going to have to be on his toes as he takes on the Supreme Milk in this game. This is not going to sit well with Brandon Field. He won't even turn his back. Well, he's turned his back. He won't look at him. Brandon Fields as if to say, why does this continue to happen to me? He is 100% sure after last month that Jean-Paul the Miserable is Logan. The Miserable. He's, he said repeatedly, you're not a mime. I want you to say to me that you are Logan. I want you to quit. He, Fields went on in his post-match promos you saw online. And he said, I'm not here for this type of nonsense. So he's probably really pissed off right now. Oh yeah, this is this is the kind of stuff that sets Field on fire. I mean, in all honesty, how are, <laughs> how do you take a guy in a full-fledged cow suit serious? Well, he just hit him with a bowline drop kick. <laughs> I, I can only imagine the rage. Oh, right, right into the post. Yeah, you can't even say ooh, it's just moo. Yeah, ooh is gonna be a pretty big part of this, but Fields is a, a guy that though is violent, but kind of harnesses it perfectly that you look at the War Wrestling Hall of Fame, which we'll have coming up in a couple of months, and there are terrific guys that are going in, but he beat a War Wrestling Hall of Fame for Lando Christopher in a last man standing match. He means business. But look where he comes from. He was running with that old school posse. The veteran Jack Thon, Cody Hawk. You're talking right there. Just those two guys alone with the seriousness that they take in this business. Good night. And Brandon Fields, you know, they haven't been here. And Brandon Fields has been stooped to this level of just... He's choking out a cow just... right now. A mad cow. It's like Jim Carrey choking a cow out and something about Mary. I mean, me, myself, and Irene. It wasn't so much of a match as it was a animal execution. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match, by submission, oh. the professional, Brandon Fields. Fields especially likes to steak a little well done, I guess. Maybe this is what he's going to tell us. When, when I saw, when I saw that I was going to be wrestling the mad cow, I could have sworn it was a joke. I mean, I know we're halfway through April, but I, I swore that it was still an April Fool's prank. It, Here's the thing, here's the thing. When I come to Lima, Ohio, when I wrestle for war wrestling, that means there's somewhere else that I'm not. I choose to be here. And when that comes out to square off with me, it is a level of disrespect that I just can't bring myself to bear. He said he wants to fight a bear. Is that what he's saying? No, no. He, but, I don't think he wants but, to fight the mad bear. At the same time, that is exactly the reason why I am here. Because every single time that there's idiots like that, or idiots like Jean Paul, the mime, I will be here to remove them from professional wrestling for good. You think I forgot? What'd you think about that, huh? You think I'm some stupid idiot? You are the shameless one, and I've always been and always will be a man with a plan. And you best remember that come June 1st, if you're man enough.
There's a uh, big portion of this show that is apparently not what's in the rundown because Gina Vacapo is out here by himself. And if you've uh, seen or been in this building the last handful of months, you know that it's pretty much been the wise guys and sort of Ripper Blackheart who have been running roughshod, but not maybe the way they used to. And Gino seems like maybe he's going to have to fight a mad cow because he's pretty angry too. You know he's got a lot to be mad about. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been joined by one half of the wise guys, the self-made man, Gino DeCapo. Because as I understand it, Tommy Irish is not here tonight. No, he's not. I came out here for one reason. Rip a Blackheart. I want you to come through that curtain and have a sit down with the made man right now. Not reading the same book, not in the same library, not in the same state. If you remember the last time we saw Ripper, he was actually handcuffed to the top rope. There was not really a lot he could do as he was forced to sort of watch the ending to that tag match and watch the wise guys take a payoff from the humbler. Yes. Ripper, for some reason, has been showing somewhat slightly of a... Uh, he's got a little bit of a, a red spot in he's that black He's a decent person, heart. apparently. Who knew? Thank you for coming out, Ripper. Fans of Lima, Ohio, fans of war wrestling, let me take you back a little bit. Let me take you back 21 years ago when Ripper Blackheart first walked through that curtain, down that aisle, and into this ring. Let me take you back to Ripper Blackheart managing legends of war wrestling. Multi-time tag team champs. Bad company. The dirty. Corruption. And my personal favorite, the wise guys. You see, Ripper, six years ago, six years ago, my phone rang, and it said, Ripper Blackhawk, and you said, Gino, I'm getting into a hairy situation. I'm getting into some dangerous circumstances, and I need a bodyguard. And what did I say, Ripper? I said, absolutely. <coughs> Six years ago, the made man walked through that curtain and down that aisle and into this ring for one purpose, to protect Ripper Blackheart. And during my tenure here at Wall Wrestling, every single one of you fans have booed, have yelled, have insulted Ripper Blackheart and the made man. I mean, they gave him a reason to. But we don't care what you gotta say about us, what you gotta say about Ripper Blackheart and the wise guys. And here's why. Because at the end of the day, Ripper Blackheart and your corner means you will be holding a title at Wall Wrestling. And by God, Ripper, you made the wise guys tag team champions. Through some nefarious methods. And he said everything done. I'm saying is true. I know it's true, that's why I'm saying it. Lies don't come out of this mouth. But lately, Ripper Blackheart, lately, you've been wanting to do things a little differently. You see, the wise guys tried to turn over a new leaf. We tried to be nice guys. We tried to be family guys. We tried to help out you and your son's relationship. And we did it for you. We did it for these people in Lima. But at a certain point, Ripper, 
It's just more fun to be bad. And that left me thinking for some time. It left me wondering why these people always hated you, Ripper. Why did she hate you? Why did he hate you? Why did that kid hate you? Everybody hated you for so long, Ripper. Why? What did you do to them? If you hear his podcast, you'd probably know You why. didn't do anything. Eh, you didn't like do it. anything to him, Ripper. Do you know why you people hated Ripper Blackheart? Is this open mic? It's not because he's a low life. It's not because he's a dirt ball. It's not because he cheats. <laughs> Even though all of those things I said are 100% true, he is a dirt ball. He is a low life. You are a cheetah, Ripper. But that's not why they hate you. These people hate you because they see themselves in you. They look at you, Ripper, and they see low rent. They see ugly. They see disgusting, they see smelly, and that is who they are. I don't think River's gonna like this intervention much longer. Each and every one He's of you lying. are just as dirty, are just as big of a <laughs> low life, are bigger cheetahs than Ripper Blackheart, and that is why you hate him, because he is a piece of trash like every single one of you. And again, these are just Gino's thoughts, not that of war wrestling. And this brings us right here, Ripper Blackheart. It brings us right to this moment. I called you out. I told you about our history. I told you Ripper, that the wise guys are going to do what's best for the wise guys. And do you know what's best for the wise guys? If we fire Ripper Blackheart. kind of inevitable, but it feels like Gino had a larger thing planned. And obviously, uh, Ripper walked right You see this, head. Ripper? I'm choking the life out of you. All Ripper's ever had is that stupid voice. And he's not going to talk anymore. Are you Ripper Blackheart? Huh? You going to talk anymore, Ripper? How you got something to say? Well, he's choking the Rip a black heart. You're gonna be sleeping with the fishes. I mean, even River Blackheart doesn't deserve this. Come on, Gino. You see what? What? Somebody's gotta put a stop to this, and there's the guy to do it. Joan Wall. Oh! He's, he's beating the tar out of Gino. It's Go, Joe Paul. Paul! Oh, here comes Brandon. And of course, where John Paul's at, Brandon Fields is that far behind. No, he's not. Poor Ripper, he walked right into this whole situation, but so did John Paul. Oh! You know what? At the end of the day. bell cow for war wrestling now saving it the entire mat look at john ball just continue to go to work on fields and there he goes he 
Rubino getting out of getting out of Dodge. And Zeno, he doesn't have Tommy Iris to back him up tonight. No, he does not. Well, we know Tom, Gino's a tough man. He can handle himself. Gino just told Matt Taylor, I'm not going in there. Come on, Gino. Put your money where your mouth is, tough guy. Taylor, fuck oh. the steam on the dime. Didn't get all, but he got enough of it. Got enough, put him right into the guardrail. Now Gino just, where's Matt Taylor going? Oh, he, he brought oh. a referee. I guess this is a... Uh, <coughs> I guess Matt's like, you know what? I'm not done with this beating. Let's make it official here. Referee just hanging out in the back a minute ago, just now kind of trying to explain to Matt Taylor we're not doing this, and Taylor, the pump kick took Gino's face off. You're the referee, do you argue with Matt Taylor? Hey, the referee is law, but when it comes to Matt Taylor, if he says he wants a match, here we go. All right, I guess he finally just kind of acquiesced, and again, Matt Taylor's done it all. Here in World Wrestling, hurry to tell him no. Gino always taking the low road. Gino, you know, you might think he might be down and out, but the man's always got a plan and he's always thinking. But poor Ripper, I, I can't believe I just said those words. You know, sometimes nice guys don't always finish first in this, you know what I mean? And Ripper, obviously, he walks right into this. I know he probably didn't think Gino was going to do anything, but come on, it's Gino DeCapo, one half of the wise guys. Ripper should have known better. I really wouldn't think that he, he really thought it through. And Taylor, the old school offense, up to the top and a high point. Singles the beginning and the end. Yeah, they usually get setting up. Just a, a massive amount of knowledge. Matt Taylor now almost 25 years of and the running knee strike. He's gone through a transformation himself in the last year. Yes, he has. He was under the influence of Jexy Black there for a while. Went for the boomstick and got caught. Gino, Gino See, went for the boot. Another the look on Taylor's face of, yeah, I don't know how you thought that was going to work. Taylor, still looking. Boom, oh. And he got one, and Gino staggered and, oh, oh. Usually is the beginning of the end. Yeah, out of that rolling DVD. There it goes, Matt Taylor up. Gino worse for wear here. Ironically, I bet Gino wishes he had River Blackheart to distract Matt Taylor right now. Wait. Who else? Wait a second. No, no way. No. Again, that Matt Gino. Uh, Gino being saved by Stevie Nett. The best I understand, this match is still ongoing. But the Canadian tuxedo there with Mr. Michelson, where he goes, hello! Good night, Jacob Rose. Here's a guy, Mr. Careless Whisper himself, Ryan Michaels. Still with the sunglasses. Of course. Taking it to the Dark Star. Now look, Gino and the Humbler, and Jacob Rose, Ryan Michaels. Here's a bunch of terrible human beings. These are these and guys are right up Gino's alley. What the hell is the Humbler looking for? Humbler's looking for a chair, I do believe. Remember, he's got his own issues. That's right. You uh, got to remember, June first at the anniversary show, it's Ryan Michaels, Jacob Rose versus Matt Taylor, Aaron Williams. Losers are never allowed to tag to no, ever again. Not this. Not. Oh! Nothing Taylor can do. Yeah, we could potentially see the unmasking of the humbler, but right it's now like, I'm trying to make Matt Taylor not only not be able to get to the anniversary show, but not get to the parking lot. 
working that chair and it's like a smooth jazz, the jazz he plays on that saxophone. And, oh! and Jacob Rhodes potentially shattering the leg and the ankle of the Dark Star. Officially, Matt Taylor defeats Gino DeCabo, but he's not going to feel like a winner right now. And no, Gino, no. somebody has to put a stop to this. Right now, the humbler has just, just got a little extra boot in on that ankle. Remember, too, that Aaron Williams not here because of things like this. The humbler, I got to believe the humbler and the entourage are going to pay massively for their sins at some point. Well, we will find out, because I don't think Taylor's gonna be much up for the task at the, for the rest of the night, but we will see June 1st. He's got seven weeks to get himself right. And you, you gotta, gotta remember, believe. You gotta remember, in that match, if the Hauntourage loses, they are not allowed, well, the whole thing is, is no one's allowed to tag again whoever loses. But if Matt Taylor and Aaron Williams can win, we get to unmask the humbler. Guys, come on.
could potentially be working their penultimate match together here in World Wrestling. Well, all I know is, is that Ryan Michaels' glasses are off and he is not happy. I think they're in the front row now. Well, that don't even really make them mad. Somebody in Lima is going to take home a souvenir. Now, uh, Jacob Rose, just a straight right hand. The draw dropping one. Jacob Rose with a big old elbow there. And look, kind of the new kids in KJ and Solo. Guys who have been around, though. I mean, you trade at the House of Truth. True Martini imparts some wisdom on you. Oh! You're going to know some things about Lima, but right now, all they're finding out is what it's like to be on the other end of a two on one. They're right now finding out exactly what the former War Tag Team Champions are all about. It's, it's a slight humbling experience. Two guys, you might not like their methods, but they are smart tag team wrestlers. And Jacob Rose keeping his opponent at all times on his half of the ring. And it's all in jeopardy come June 1st. We talked oh. about it all night. If you're not already in possession of a ticket for that show, and it went fast during the intermission of this show, you are going to need to get one quick because good seats oh. are not oh. going to be available. breaker. Hit him with that Winnipeg strength. Oh, he's not going to let the young boy get that tag. He got a, uh, I believe that's a pinky from the lady in the front row. Good to see, though, the guy that's with her enjoying the concessions they have here. Oh, well, you know, it's, usually sometimes they're about half off right now. Missed the need in Rose, but still right into that sleeper in it. A veteran enough in Michaels, not only did he do it right in the center of the ring, but he turned his opponent towards his own corner. Yes, that way, that way he cannot even attempt to try to make a tag. Yeah, anime oh. in solo and out animated on the outside. And he's been out there five or six minutes now. If he can get in, it's a question of how he gets in. He might be able to do some damage. Right now, Jacob Rose and Ryan Michaels has literally got him pinned on their half of the ring. And right now, the Hubbler doing a little bit of extra work. Whenever there's an advantage. Jacob Rose says he can bench press your mother. Hey, Do you believe that? Depends on how much your mother weighs. That was his joke. He said as long as your mom is less than 295. Well, it's not a not a real great crowd for them to try to ingratiate themselves to. Using the advantage of the referee with his back turn. And the humbler out here once again. Joe would have been able to see that coming uh, given the fact that he's refereed every match since the dawn of time. Yes. That's not me, that's him. Hell oh, yeah. We all know Joe ref the first food fight. And look at that, what a tag. They're tagging in and out, keeping the fresh guy in, keeping this young man cut completely off from his partner Solo over there. And again, even more so than half the ring, they've kind of cut it into a third. And a big oh. power slam. That's we're done. One, two, and ladies no. and gentlemen, that was a jaw-dropping power slam. Apparently the answer to how much is KJ Reynolds weigh? Less than less than 295. 295. I'm not sure he solo might be 295 together. Uh, Ryan Michaels, Michaels up at the top. Him. Oh! Excellently executed. The perfect. Drop that elbow right across the sternum. And again, these are two guys that you can't take anything away from. Oh, you heard that. And the, the how are you doing? Oh, oh, no! Oh, my God! Oh, no! Good night, Mr. Michaels! Now, Rose, he's got to prevent that. Oh, no. He's he in a world see of trouble. He doesn't see that Solo got his tagged in. Oh, big jumping clothesline. Another. Toxic, you can see energy on his tights. And right now on the face and the neck and everywhere on Jacob Rose. He's assembling all the Dragon Balls right here in this one fire. 
Dumps the clothesline, in, assisted in Zaguri. He's got cards you haven't even seen yet. Dumps Michaels down to the floor. Remember, Rose is the legal man. And a uh, start, kind of what we had. These two guys came out and it jumped the entourage right out of the game. Oh! And a beautiful uh, drop combination. Two on one, one, two, and Michael's quickly breaking that up. You see the, the athleticism and the speed that man has? Oh! I think the photographer about felt it. Yeah. Just dumps him out, and yeah, Michael's not a legal man, and out! Yep. Up and over he goes. He's getting real acquainted with that hard floor here at War Wrestling. Thank you, please come again. So well. Trying to do it on himself, but there's, come on, Joe. Listen, the humbler's trying to humble the situation, okay? Just get him out of here. Now on the full head of steep, whoa. Talk about it, Jacob Rose knows a couple of things about a couple of things. And this is exactly how these two guys won last month. That top that rope pulled off. Beautifully Solo executed. With no help whatsoever. Uno and that'll be the end of that break. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of this match, Joel dropping Jacob Rose, Ryan Michaels, the Moonlight Express. And at least for one more night, the entourage remains complete. Here they are, they're victorious here tonight. The question is, will they be raising their hands that way as a unit on June the 1st? From the looks of it, and hopefully, Aaron Williams and Ma Taylor can scrape themselves together. They're a heavy favorite coming into June 1st. Nothing Ryan Michaels loves more than Ryan Michaels. And here's a guy right here who absolutely not only does he love himself but he loves to win and then he loves to rub it in your face this mask stays on if you have a camera <laughs> in the front row you have to watch out with a humbler spraying things in your face a message has been sent to now both aaron williams and matt taylor you boys need to understand that the greatest tag team, not only in war wrestling today, but in the history of war wrestling, is Jacob Rose and Ryan Michaels. And boys, I cannot wait until June 1st at the anniversary show when you guys step in the ring and we can prove to the entire world how great we really are. Aaron, Matt, I told you guys from the start, we were not just gonna humble you, but we were gonna break you. This is the present and the future of this company. If you show up on June 1st, then I guess, we will give them their final lesson. Matt, just like we told Aaron last month, everything that has happened to you two, it is all your fault. You have asked for all of it. So I know you're not used to it, buddy, but it's about time that you take accountability for your actions. June 1st, the hot rush stands tall and you guys can never tag again, and that's the skinny. We told you, be humble, or we will humble you. <laughs> Does anybody else want to underestimate us now? Ladies and gentlemen, the War Respect Championship Challenge continues tonight. Please welcome the War Wrestling Respect Champion, Poison Apollo Star! Mr. 
Mr. Mo Better Wrestling himself, 329 days as the respect champion. He's won everything. This promotion, your favorite promotion, any promotion, doesn't matter. The one and the only Apollo star, and we've seen kind of a who's who of competitors against him trying to take that belt, but he said, if you're gonna take this from me, you're gonna have to kill me. Well, we noticed last month, Cassius, his son, he answered the challenge. Apollo would not wrestle his own son, which caused a little bit of a controversy after Apollo's victory. The son did not come out and do the traditional dance hug with his old, with his old man. He's got to be questioned of like exactly what is going through the mind of Cassius right now. Conspicuous by his absence right now. And you go back and you watch the last show, and you see Apollo talking to the camera when Cassius walks up, and he simply tells him, not here, not now, we're not doing this, as a continuation of what happened in the ring, but uh, you gotta wonder what's, what's on up, his mind. So we already know the deal. I'm here to take on top challenges. I've always maintained that Apollo relax, Star relax. was probably You're not gonna see that. made in a I lab, but uh, they want him to fight his son, he might just fight himself. But I mean, obviously. It is what it is, baby. Bring out my challenger. And who is that challenger going to be? First of all, you can't be in your right mind to want to fight Apollo Star to begin with. No, I mean, this man can stretch you, he'll punch you, kick you. He'll have you flipped in every which way you could possibly go. And it, so here we go again. It appear that at least the uh, moment will have the challenger in, well, maybe not, in Cassius Star, but Apollo, he's got the microphone and you just heard him say, we're not doing that. It is what it is, how he feels, but you're maybe not ready to take on that. You know, Cash is an upcoming star here at War Wrestling. We seen him take on Jack Bond last year at the anniversary show. Well, the, the show before the anniversary show. And this kid just gets better and better. Oh, every week. hey, cut that off. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cash, what you doing? Get here. Come here. Uh oh. You may be better, but he Dad says, get your butt in here. You might not be Mo better. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen this brewing over the last three or four months. At some point, Daddy's going to put his foot down. Already said that we're not doing this. I'm the champion in this family. You will be the champion of this family, but you're not the champion of this family now. You are my son. I am the champion of this family. Cut this shit out. Get out of the ring. Whoa. Not fighting tonight. Get out of the ring. Get out. No, 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 don't listen to them. You listen to me and get out of the ring. Stop this shit. Now, I've heard it said That's that Apollo doesn't want to take on Cassius because Cassius can beat him. But Apollo seems to be more of the theory of I don't want to beat up my own kid. It's for his safety, not mine. You know, when you get into this business and you got your son by your side, some like some of the situation might actually, uh, you know, you got to come across this situation every once in a while. Speaking of Apollo Star again, the War Wrestling Hall of Famer, his tag team partner, the guy he's torn up the Midwest, and Drew Skills will be him the challenger. From the, the Hamptons, King Mitchell Taylor. Taylor! An Ebony Prince to apparently a king. This, you know, I, I don't want to be a lot of people tonight. I sure as hell don't want to be that guy. 
with a beyond pissed off Apollo star in the ring. Yeah, that right there, you... Cassius has got his dad fired up. I feel like right now, King Mitchell might be in a little bit of trouble. He might be in trouble before he even gets in the ring. With Ka he seems to have the issue with Cassius, and you can hear the fans. Doesn't seem like the King has many royal subjects here tonight. They, it's Lima. They just don't know how to act in front of royalty. That's all it is. Once upon a time, there was a king of Lima. Thy name was Danny Daniels. Well, that throne has apparently been passed down, or at least this gentleman believes so. Well, he just—he's here to—he wants his respect. And to get Apollo and Cassius, it should be a fun car ride home. I assume they came together. You know, if, at the end of the day, it's your father, and you got to listen to your father. But right now, Cassius might have got out of the ring, but he definitely is not leaving. And the king who lost to Cassius last month is going to take on, he might end up fighting Mama Star at the end of this. I mean, he's... <laughs> oh! The... The handicap? I don't know what. Oh! oh Springboard cover! I, I'm not really sure what is. Oh! Oh! It what is really official happened? here? They didn't even get a chance to get an official out here. And a long way across the ring for the king. Oh! And he hit him with a frog splash. And loaded that bewildered look. Is that the champion or... No! Oh! That was Dad saying, I'm going to whoop your tail. That's his dad saying, you do what Dad says, or you get a lariat right across the throat. He might want to call Uncle Drew and ask him for help right now. You're selfish. You're spoiled. And you are entitled. You never even acted like this. I ain't never had to deal with this from you. You hear the passion in Apollo's voice right now. You think you want it, but you don't. But you got it. June 1st, at the Hall of Fame show, it's father versus son for the World Wrestling Respect Championship. And I think if ever there was a poignant word in what he said, he overcut the word respect. And that's exactly what he's got to feel like he's going to beat into his kid on June the 1st. He's going to have to. Cassius, every week, comes out here. He's been eyeing, or every month, sorry, he's been eyeing that title. He told him last month, I don't want to fight you. Get out of the ring. Tonight, he did the same thing, and Dad had to put him in his place. And the, there's no dancing from Apollo Star. That is an all-business Apollo Star. Somebody's upset. I got my head on straight. I think he's down by just knocking say, it off. World Wrestling Championship match. <laughs> now don't get me wrong. You are not washed up. You are not on your way out. And you are still one of the best wrestlers in that locker room. And that is why I asked for this match in the first place. Ted wants to prove himself. Yeah, and, and you know what? We always talk about people finding the measuring stick around here at war. Well, Cash is well, understand this. He's hitting the measuring stick. June 1st, War 21. You ain't gonna have to pass the torch. Because I'm gonna take it. And along with that, I will be taking the War Respect Championship. Cassius means business going into June. But here's the problem. You say it in April. Can you back it up in June? It's seven weeks away. Cassius has got a lot of time to think about his actions right now. 
Unfortunately, who knows more how to take down Frankenstein's monster than Dr. Frankenstein. This is what we was talking about. This is what we've been talking about for the whole time. What did I say? Don't come in this shit and then get get an attitude and get to acting crazy. Get to listen to the fans and listen to the girls and listen to everybody but me. But you wasn't listening. You wasn't listening. You let that hype get to your head. You let them fill you up with the craziness and thinking that you was ready to fight pop. But you not. You not. I taught you what you know. I taught you everything you know. I didn't teach you everything I know because you ain't ready for everything I know. But on January 1st, you gonna find out what it is. You gonna find out June 1st. It don't matter. At the Hall of Fame show, I'm gonna put you on to what dad really is about and what respect is really about. June 1st. June 1st, War 21, father versus son for the War Respect Championship. I asked for it, and while we may have been a little rude accepting, you accepted it, and you gave me exactly what I wanted. I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand what I went through. I don't think you understand what it's like to wait for a moment for 24 years. I don't think you understand what it's like to fight for 24 years, to be great, to follow in someone great's footsteps. But best believe, June 1st, I'm going to show you. In June 1st, War 21, Father versus Son, best believe the Son will be leaving as War Respect Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, our next match is for the War Wrestling Tag Team there has been a lot of this show that has sort of been played by ear and has been built upon what has happened here in World Wrestling. And this is kind of one of those. Introducing first, a couple into the ring by Check C Black. Accompanied by Mercy from the Waverly Hills Sanitarium, Kronos, the Berserker. And from Fort Ancient Tacoma Valley, the Pop Master himself, the Prophet of Pain, Amos. They are the War Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Duping Roll the Pro and Jimmy Shane out of their belts in that three or that two on two on two match, but yeah, there was a lot that was said at the end of the last show. Brandon Day in that six man in the main event of the last show covered his first loss in war in over two years at the hands of these guys. Oh yeah, that match of Beast Man. But Jackson Black afterwards said, "We are the best tag team that war has ever had." Chris Hall, we don't care who you bring, bring yourself and we'll show you why whoever that you can find any former champions, we will continue to be champions into the anniversary show. It is 143 days of, a, of absolute craziness and I'm slowly getting behind him here. You know, I understand they won the belt now, you know, and we all fight. Yeah, you know and now, ladies and gentlemen, representing the, the challengers. The odds were in their favor. But they proved that they're the most out. He is a war wrestling. Hall of Famer. Silver Black. Chris Hall. So you've got one of the longest reigning tag team champions in world wrestling history, and Mr. Bad Company himself, in Chris Hall. But Sherman Tank's not here. Who is this tag team partner? We have no idea. They didn't give us any notes. They didn't give us any heads up. Or, you know what? I'm surprised Chris Hall is just crazy enough to say, screw a partner. I'll take both of you on by myself. We know it's not Brandon Day because he's coming up in the main event. 
He's got his own problems with the Beast Man. Yeah, so tonight, like I said. Hey, Jesse. Oh, well, let's find out. Jesse, I want to ask you. Did you get the package I sent for you earlier today? I know you, I know you got it because there's a delivery receipt. Well, how'd you kick it when I when I had it special delivered? Wait a minute, what? What? What is he talking about? It was a little special delivery for you. You got mail. Oh my God! It can't be. <laughs> no way. He can't be here. Oh, he's here. Damn, how's come to your little town? on the calendar, but we generally only see the postman uh, deliver in July. Yeah. Oh no, and he's, he's just crazy enough to do it. What Jesse the... better get out of the ring. If I'm Jesse, I might leave the county. What is he, he unleashed the monster. And he, he set him on Amos. Oh, jeez. Well, that puddle down there was Amos. Now leaving Chris Hall. Chris up, up and over. Cronus to the outside. Chris Hall just outsmarted Cronus. Let me just say that again. Chris Hall just outsmarted Cronus. Whoa. And again, one of the longest reigning tag team champions, Ian Sherman Tank, if you did not see Bad Company, find a Bad Company match. I prefer the one in December of 2010. A ladder match against the high-def supernovas, but look at the big oh. man fly. There is so much going on in that corner right now. So much going on in that corner. The fact they're not chinning beef right now is kind of underwhelming. Whoa! Oh! No! Oh. Oh. Big spine buster! Amos now. Uh, oh! Shot oh, to the wrong action. area code. With ease. The big guy, he's gonna fly. No way. Many men have been destroyed by this move. Up, oh, oh, a big elbow, that's it. We've got new champions. One, one two, two. Oh. And Amos barely, barely kicking out at the last second. And that Jezebel, Jesse Black stole the mailbag. She just, what the? He just dove through the curtain and it's now two on one. Oh, oh, big black hole slam. Amos is legal. One, two, what the hell is this? Ladies and gentlemen, the winners and still more wrestling tag team champions. Just like that. No wicked! He's got a voice that'll go right you through. You see that? Between the two of them, they held the belt for the seven other days. We'll do well, she's pushing back here. We thought we literally we thought they were on the on the ropes there. To control and somehow, some way, Cronus Aaron has figured out it, how, to, how to tackle the two big men. The greatest, the dirtiest. Uh oh, what is that? That music. Wait a second, that's not. 
This doesn't feel like an accident. That, that music hasn't been heard here in... I can't even tell you how long. Wait. Are they here? They... Oh! Is there the dirtiest tag team in war wrestling? Did I hear you guys delusionally say that you are the greatest tag team of war wrestling? <laughs> to Jackson, it is not a delusion. Now, maybe Freak Show and Sideshow Bob over here have been living under a rock, but we never lost these titles. As all of you clearly remember. And remember the dirty held them multiple times in different versions. In fact, if you take a nice look, our name's right on them because we were, yeah, get a nice shot of that shit right there. We were the greatest tag team in war wrestling. We were war wrestling. The problem is he has to say were. They haven't been here in a while, and these guys have been running things. Yes. <laughs> A lot of things have changed since the last time they were here. Amos hey, and Kronos are the king of the match. It's been six long years. Also, Brandon Edwards is a lot bigger. You guys need to understand something. I don't know who you are, but I know you know who we are. You see, as I walk around in this ring, it was this very building I had to retire. I thought I would never wrestle again. But ha ha ha! I've been cleared. Uh-oh. We're gonna, we're gonna get this now? I guess we're getting it right now. It's a night of impromptu matches. That's a straight right hand from a monster. Wow. 
I don't even know how to fathom this. This crazy guy is strapped to that crazy guy, to that crazy guy, to this crazy guy. The winners of this match, the fans. Yeah. Because that's going to be all out brutality. And all, all you need to know is double strap the wicked, the dirty, war tag team titles. Wow. thrown off, he doesn't know what to do. How often does that happen? Rarely ever. You know, we always talk about how Amos is always clicking and he's crazy. But he's kind of a mastermind behind everything that goes on in the ring. And he looks absolutely flustered right now. If anything can happen on the road to June the 1st, imagine what's going to go down in this building on June the 1st. Don't want to miss it. June the 1st, World 21 Hall of Fame anniversary show. You know what's amazing to me? Is how a little bit of acknowledgement just short circuits the brain and makes the ego go crazy. The dirty, Austin Mannix, Brandon Edwards. You're being inducted into the War, war Hall of Fame. And now all of a sudden, Brandon's cleared. And you think that you should compete with us. You think that you should fight us later that night. You think that now is the time that you should strike. June 1st, what you should do is collect your little plaque, give your stupid little speech, and leave. Leave with your legacy and your bodies intact. This isn't six, seven years ago when the dirty reigned supreme, when the dirty called the shot. The landscape has changed. The Wicked runs the tag division now. The Wicked runs war wrestling. Oh, you never lost your titles. Y'all are out here living in the past. Living in the past is what gets people hurt. And what you're gonna realize in the very near future is you should have stayed gone. You know, it's a shame that this show has to come to an end because it has been one terrific night of surprise after surprise, returning Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers, guys leaving a, a huge mark on the anniversary show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event. And then this happened. Let's take them for one call. And it is for the War Wrestling Championship. Introducing first the challenger, but coming into the ring high, Jack C. Black. He's from the deepest, darkest West Virginia. Beast Man! We're seeing the unchained versus the unhinged. I think you can make that case for both of them. Brandon Day has been so hyper focused on really Jesse Black's group in kind of any form. I mean, suffering his first loss in two years, albeit with a lot of help to get to that point in that six man. But even the promo that he cut after his loss, boy, oh boy, he might come in unchained and completely unhinged in this match, whether that hurts him or helps him. Well, I don't think anything against Beastman's going to help you. I can tell you that much. Maybe three other guys? Yeah, well, we've seen that. Three other guys, no problem. Two other guys, no problem. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the from war. From Bridgewater, Virginia, Brandon Day. He is the war wrestling heavyweight champion. into uh, June, 329 days since he won that title. He's defended it five times since last May, but 
whether he wins or loses, what kind of shape is he going to be in in seven weeks? It, you know, that's tonight. We, You know, there's one thing about Brandon Day that I got to say about the man. There is no quit. He's got more guts. This man, we watched him go through that, the heavyweight title tournament, wrapped like a mummy from head to toe with all of his injuries. And he fought tooth and nail to finally get that belt. It's one of those things where it might take more than Beastman to pry it from his hands. However, Beastman is one heck of an obstacle sitting on the other side. They talk about the unstoppable force and the immovable object. He might just be both. Yeah, yes, he is. I don't know where the deepest, darkest West Virginia is, but imagine him taking the uh, belt back to that I don't want to say nice place because I don't want him to come after me. We and obviously try to say, hey, Beastman, you're going to need to bring that back. That's one thing that we're possibly, uh, we don't want to happen here is watching the belt getting taken to the deepest, darkest parts of West Virginia. But if Brandon Day ain't on his A game tonight, we could possibly see it happen. I think it's going to need to be an A++ kind of game. You know, though, uh, again, the Beastman is not a normal human being in that he maybe doesn't have pain receptors the way that a normal person does. We've seen Brandon Day, you talked about, all the way through the title tournament, but how do you put him down and keep Beastman down? Well, you know, we saw Matt Taylor last year had to hit Beastman with just about everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, I think the kitchen sink was used in that match to finally keep Beastman down, but Matt Taylor had a hell of a lot of wear and tear after that. Oh! Kind of an awkwardness, but I would say kind of the power and the balance of a Brandon Day that he's able to kind of slip out of that and not let Beastman use his brute force. No, and what a way to counter it with a little her a karana to keep him off and to keep it off the bounce. Oh! Yeah, that was right across the bottom of the jaw. Nice. <laughs> oh! He hit him with a Mountain Dew. That guy said I paid a dollar for that. That was like a half full king. Well, it's half off, so it's only 50 That's cents. True. Right. It's half off because he just smashed half of it. <laughs> My goodness. And, it, you know, you've always kind of got to look at these kind of matches because I talk about Beastman is not really a normal human being. You know it's not going to be a catch-as-catch-can classic with Beastman. But Reverie George is, you know, he's, he's got that decision of how much do I let go before I kind of go, all right, no, we're not doing this. And apparently the chair was the answer. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is Reverie George has got a lot on his plate tonight. These guys might fight all over this arena. And that's the hardest thing, too, I would imagine, from a referee perspective of, I mean, you see, look, Brandon using that weapon, but I don't want to be the guy who ends this kind of match and this feud, really, in a, any kind of, uh, kind of gimmicky thing. But there's got to be a way. Oh, my God. Brandon Day literally just backed up a football field. I don't know where the dentist is from here, but someone get Jack Spratt on line one. But again, the referee's got his discretion of kind of how this can go. But I think maybe each guy's got to realize even that guy's got to have a limit. I think Beastman just tried to eat three small children over there in the crowd. And he was hungry. Husk. I mean, I don't think you need to be in a, a mid-match snack. You know what I mean? I don't think you want to be a mid-match snack. <laughs> I mean, Beastman, who pinned Day in the middle of the ring, he's got to be thinking, that, you know, I do that and I leave here 10 pounds heavier. That's not even the small children, that's taking the belt with him. Yeah. Maybe the children are a snack later. But Day, he was, he's a gentleman who's been around a while. He's got his own wrestling school a little north of here. He knows every trick because He's been everywhere. Yeah, he's been. Oh my God, look at the strength the, and the power of Beastman. And I don't know if the camera caught it, but the look on Dave's face as he was being slammed was, oh no, this is not going to go well. You know, here's the thing you got to look at Beastman. 
Brandon Day has been going through, and he can match power with power, you know, or he's a little bit more bigger than the competitor. But how do you manage to go for a signature arm bar like you just did and get slammed like it was with ease? Like, what kind of psych psychological damage does that do to you in a match like this? Day beat Aaron Williams for the belt. Completely different competitor than what Beastman is. He defends it. The Black Diamond Jack Vaughn. The Hall of Fame Renate Matson. Jack Price. Or the Black Diamond Jack Price, rather, and the veteran Jack Vaughn. But even Carson Drake for a couple of months has left battered and bruised and bloody. Day's got every trick you can find in the arsenal, but like I said, what is that one thing that Beastman takes to three seconds hand? That's that's something we'll never figure out, and that's something that Day's gonna have to really figure out if he can't make it through this match. If he can make it through this match, then <laughs> kudos to him, because right now no one's been able to figure out how to stop the Beast Man. Tay with a clothesline and a full head of steam had little effect. But I would imagine having a Tom Cabrera today that just got turned inside out. He takes a little bit from every opponent and from every match and kind of goes, all right, maybe I can hit a thigh slap. Maybe I can get something here or something there and take a chance that maybe Beastman isn't ready for. But here's the thing, you go into and you got all this preparation, you got all of this knowledge. The man ain't there. There is, this man is completely unpredictable. You can't prepare yourself, in my, in my opinion, for something so unpredictable as me, Spam. Especially when he's just bludgeoning you and trying to choke you out. I mean, I, if, he's not, if he's not out here trying to eat small children, he's literally out here just choking and slamming everything that walks. And I'm not even 100% sure that Beastman really cares about winning this match. No, just about inflicting as much punishment. And, and Jexy Black behind the referee's back again. Hasn't she done enough tonight? I don't think Jesse's ever done doing her job. Caught him right in the solar plexus. He even got Beastman rocking a little bit. Dave with a straight rights. Oh, he's almost shaved off the beard with those right hands. You know, Dave's got to put a little bit of uh, extra mustard on everything. Oh, jeez. You know, that's the thing about wrestling, Beast Man. <coughs> Normal opponents, you don't, you know, you get to do certain things. Save a little energy. Save a little bit of the extra for later on in the match. But look at the size of this man. You have to use everything you got, every punch, every kick. If you can slam them, you got to make sure that if you're using 110% of yourself. But look at Beast Man. He's, he seems okay with a count out. It doesn't win him the belt. But again, kind of, I don't think he cares. He doesn't. All, all he cares about is the fact that he is getting to beat up Brandon Day. That's all he cares about. I'm gonna hide because I think he was yelling at us. I don't I don't like the way he was looking at me. Just lock eyes and don't show fear. I'm gonna, Isn't that what they tell you to do? Stand <laughs> taller? Don't show fear. Cocktail. Yay, barely breaking it. Beating the count. Now, if you're the referee, you had better hide because now you pissed off Beastman. Dang, go! Oh. A jawbreaker at his own expense. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I have. Oh no. No! Husk gives you the expression of what goes up must come down. And that was a lot of weight coming down right on top of Brandon Day in that big Samoa drop. Kind of the uh, oddity of it is, again, if you're Day, you're trying to kind of generate some kind of momentum. Oh, just out in time, or otherwise we would be having Day pancakes. But he had to try to generate some kind of momentum. Unfortunately, though, Beastman watched him run away to come back, and it sort of gave him time to reset himself. I felt the tremor all the way up here from Beastman hitting that mat. I could only imagine what it would have done to Brandon Day's head. 
I don't think there would be a Brandon Day. He said, oh! oh! Howdy. Oh, I thought he was going to fight his arm. Day again. Shoulder block that had no effect. Go drive into the side of a mountain. I imagine it's the same feeling. It's like driving right into a bridge in park. That drop kick. Oh, sends Beastman to the... But still, out, out on his feet. Day now. He tried this last month. Oh! A suicide dive. He's successful. But Beastman right back up on his feet again. I don't know that he knows where he's at, though. Day all the way to the top. And he's high. Oh! Finally getting the big man down. Oh, oh my lord. Okay, then. <laughs> that was all arguing. Was that two? <laughs> he at I... least wanted a two count out of that. But Beastman is I showing I you, Sam. I don't think it matters. It was only a one. One, two, gold jacket, green jacket. Who gives a crap? He kicked out at one. But again, the amount of energy, and it's warm here inside this building. And Beastman, just a clubbering blow. Oh, that slam, that's, that's a new champion. One, two, and oh. At the last second, Day now again, having to expend so much energy just to get the big guy down for two, or one, and Beastman just fires right back through it. Hits off a giant move. We were like paper thickness away from having a new war heavyweight champion. Like a post-it note. <laughs> well, how much right now does Day have left in the tank? Like I said earlier, you have to use every ounce of your strength to do anything remotely to Beast Man. Oh, and Beast right Man. now, he's, he's smiling. Bull has steam and no! Oh! I think I saw the ring move three feet. Day now is going to try the exact same thing. Oh! Splash! Right back up. Get out of the oh. George, an inadvertent mistake for Day. Oh my God. And here comes Amos. Amos, see you later. Yep, see you later. Unfortunately, where he goes, these other large gentlemen follow. And wait. Sony. It's Zodiac! What the hell? We haven't seen Zodiac here in World Wrestling in months! And he's... Oh, he ducked the heart! Oh! Transmission! And he's immediately tapping out, but he's not even close to being a part of this match. I guess he's going to sleep anyways. Now, now Jexy? Jexy on the back, and it's a... A four-on-one, a five-on-one. Gotta get better security around here. Oh. Jackson's gonna get what's coming to her. Then, then again, maybe not. He's been slapping in his own version of the Taz Midget on day. Oh! And the uh, low blow by the champion. He's gonna. He can't hook his hands, right? Look how thick his neck is. It's like trying to put a turkey in a sleeper hole. He's got him wobbling. You ever try and put a bowling ball to sleep? And he oh. just jumped him over, but Day hit the side of that apron hard. And the referee in no position is Amos. Oh, no! Just knocked out the monster. The Wicked absolutely is not on the right page here. Their GPS is not working. No, it's not. Uh, it's got Day in the claw. Kronos is destroying this place. Is Day, we were at Slingshot, but Beastman held onto the ropes. Oh! He went for it again. Unsuccessful. That clothesline has taken out a lot of men, but. That's two. 
Beast Man. Look! Oh, he got it finally! But he had to go to the left-handed lariat to get it done. Beast Man didn't see it coming, and that's that's got to be it. One, two, it. Oh, and Jet Safe. What is happening? And finally, referee George has had enough. I said earlier, what was the tipping point that he was willing to handle? Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match is the result of a disqualification and still more wrestling heavyweight champion, Unchained Brandon Day. And the five and six on one wasn't too much. It was finally the referee's discretion that maybe saved at Brandon Day. Jetsy's having a worse day than anybody can possibly have. Again, this is all a lead up to June the 1st. Well, where does this leave us? We, technically, we know Brandon Day won. Wait a second, we might find out. Cut it, cut it, cut that shit off. The champion has picked up a microphone and he's uh, apoplectic at this point. You may not have stolen that title from me, but you stole something more important, and that's a queen, clean win right in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. Well, that's kind of how the wicked operates. Yeah, it is. So I tell you what. I may be the champion, but I'm gonna issue a challenge right here, right now. I hear tell, War's gonna have a cage at the 21st anniversary event. And if you know anything about cage matches and anniversary shows, it's gonna be a doozy. So here it is, one on one, me and the Beast Man, inside a steel, Cage. Wait a second. Wait, what the? What has he got in his hand? What the hell? He just turned him in the face with a fireball. Zody the Mystic. Right into the face of the Challenge accepted, bitch. And again, the numbers game, but presumably that won't happen inside a steel cage, right? It's so wicked, you're gonna tell me that Amos wouldn't come out of the Raptors to get into that ring and help Beastman? Beastman holding a title that is not his, make no mistake, but June the 1st, it very well could be. This could possibly, could not play in Jenksy's favor. Does your, eye, does, does, does your burned eyes heal in seven weeks? Day has gotta come into June 1st with scorched eyebrows. I guess we're gonna find out. All the titles on the line, grudge matches, Hall of Fames. June the 1st, I said this before and I'll say it again, you had better have your tickets because it is going to be one amazing afternoon into the evening. And if every uh, previous cage match in the main event is he an indication there is going to be one hell of a fight in the main event? Wait, what is he? Is he trying to set his hair on fire? Can we get this man out of the ring? Check out tickets at warwrestling.com. And again, we hope the champion is fit, able to be there. June 1st, War 21 Hall of Famer anniversary show. Main event, Brandon Day, Beast Man, and they're going to be locked in a cage. For Coach Steve and Michael McCormick, have a great night and eat better tomorrow from all of us here at War Wrestling. See you June 1st. First the Dirty, and now Brandon Day. There must be something in the lime of air tonight, because y'all are just stuck on stupid. I hear making some bad decisions. Husk! Brandon Day, you want a challenge? My monster, my animal, my beast man? Husk. To a cage match at the anniversary show. Beast man? 
to a cage match. You want to take my monster and put him in a cage? You want to take my animal and put him in a cage? You really want to lose that title, don't you?